Micro Duster Torch Time. This week on Torch Time, we're going to take this color prep tube that I manufactured during the last session on Torch Time, and we're going to put some switchbacks in it and go ahead and condense it into some small balls. Now, I'm only going to show the process on one piece, and then I'm going to leave the rest for you to figure out until next week when I'm going to show an assembly. But here you go, this is switchbacks, and I'll even go ahead and throw in a reversal. Now understand that switchbacks and reversals are two completely separate techniques. I see people screw them up all the time. They're not always together. They're not always apart. They're just two separate techniques. Switchbacks are making the lines go back and forth in reverse directions. Reversals are when you actually reverse the axis of a blown or solid piece by 90 degrees or more. So let's take a look at doing the switchbacks and I'll go ahead and show you how to do a reversal. Alrighty, as always, I'll talk you through it as best I can as I go. If I think of something, I'll mention it. If I don't think of something and you guys have a question, feel free to ask. And as always, comment, rate, subscribe, send your friends, and what I'd really like is for other glass artists to start responding and we can get a glass community here on YouTube so that people interested in glass art can actually benefit from not only my perspective on how to do it, but since there's so many diverse ways to handle every individual task in glass, let's go ahead and spread the joy, people. Spread the joy. Put on your dididiums, light your torch, turn on your ventilation, and share with the world what makes you happy about your art. Now this is the color prep we made. I squirt it with a little end mill and I pop it off. I have color tube press now that I'm starting to break down into individual sections. Each individual section that I'm cutting and prepping will become an entirely new little ball as I do this process of adding switchbacks. Good glass joints between dissimilar thicknesses of glass, as in this point, and this color prep tube, require that you get good at heating the glass, getting in and getting out, and applying a little bit of tension to avoid alder cuts during the cooling process. Well, what I've got here at this point is a piece of the color prep tube mounted onto a point and the end closed off. During this next stage, it's important that you be able and work on the skill of having completely synchronous motion between your right hand and your left hand even though this side and this side are rarely going to be the exact same diameter which means you have to have a differential rotational rate from your right hand in comparison to your left in most times. I also find it important to be able to do it in this position one hand up, reverse, both up and it should be real easy for you to move around like this in the hand positions while keeping the piece axial. You're going to have to keep it axial while you get it to your lips and back. So this is something to really memorize what an axial motion feels like. And the easiest way to do that is with a solid piece of glass that's completely straight. Because once it gets in the molten stage, it's up to your hands to keep it aligned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat band after band starting at one end and proceeding to the other and I'm going to put a twist in each little hot band section. Avoid the temptation to try to push Maria's during this stage. It will actually cause you problems later on. So here you have a tube that was originally straight lines pulled out and then turned into a bunch of little wigwags going back and forth. This is switchbacks. The trick from here is learning how to take this relatively ugly, ununiform piece of tube and turn it into something that catches the eye. And that's what's going to come next. Now there's a couple of criticals and one is this little divot area that I made where I'm going to separate from this point later when I do the reversal. Right now we're going to do the single most magical part of this process, which is the con when I condense the art from being a long tube into being a little round hollow ball, and you get to see what that pattern turns into. And 
here's where that little dip really comes in handy. It becomes a nice easy place for me to separate this hollow ball from this point while I'm doing the reversal. So here's your switchbacks and obviously this hasn't been formed in anything and these are very lazy switchbacks. They're really not that, uh, I mean they're cool but you can get a lot more precise if you're planning what you want the finished piece to look like. I did this fast and dirty just so people could see how it gets condensed and turned into tighter lines. When you're ready to do a reversal, there's probably a million ways to do a reversal. I'm going to show you my favorite. That's in the one I like. Either side. Open a hole. Do not attach your new punty up to it, and this gives me the chance to create a really clean second termination. And then I can condense that termination down, bringing it to the same rough thickness for the rest of the piece. Just give it a little puff like that to keep it from closing down in on itself, as it were. Grab a little hollow punty. When everything's ready to fuse, one quick in and out. Make sure that your new blow pipe is 90 degrees, that your piece is sealed. Snap off your cold seal punty and then reheat and condense and blow the piece two or three times until it's completely uniform thickness. And there you have it. That is a switchback, condensed down, and then reverse. Switchback and reversal with a clean termination on this side and another clean termination on this side. Next week, I'll show you how to do something else with these, like stack them together. Again, this is a fast demo, so don't get overly concerned on the art quality here. And while you're learning, don't get too anal about it, because it takes quite a while.